Hello, this is Tegan Fusey, and welcome back to another video. Because in this one, we're going to be looking at how Monkey became Cal Bunko in the TMNT 2007 movie. Now, this story is a really interesting one, and took place in the TMNT 2007 prequel comics. Now, these prequel comics more or less took like one character and gave them their own single issue, and more or less developed them and gave them like a story to really develop some ideas that will be later explored in the movies. Now, we already explored how Raphael became the Night Watcher in issue number one. Now, today's one, we're looking at how Mikey became Calvin Cole, and it's somewhat interesting. Now, if we do go back to the first issue, which was Raphael's one, there was little mentions of how Mikey wants to be like become Calvin Cole, and I was talking to Don Tell about it, getting the idea set up, and stuff like that. And that's more or less where we are going into this issue. And this whole idea of Calvin Cole was more or less redivert really in the TMNT 2007 movie, where we do get to see Mikey go off and do parties and stuff like that. But in this one, we do get to see more or less he's like sort of like the early days of Calvin Cole, which is like really interesting. What we're doing it. Okay, so first start off with Mikey getting dressed up to go to this hockey game. Now, in this bit, we do get to see Mikey talking about the good old days where him and his brothers were fighting a good fight, but now it's just Mikey and Donnie just doing their stuff and trying to not interfere the world as much as possible. And that's where we do get to see Mikey is going to a hockey game because the person who's running the event had a kid and he basically asked Mikey to be Calvin Cole for his son's birthday party and liked him so much that he wanted to have him for the hockey game because he thought it would be a really good mascot. But when Mikey is at the hockey game, we do get to see this rubber comes in and he steals his old lady's purse and runs off. Now Mikey tries to go after the rubber, but that's when one of the hockey players actually trips Mikey up. And this is where things go from bad to worse for Mikey. Now the Kawabunga Cole head comes off, and this is when the hockey player starts to think that it's a really bad costume and stuff like that, and they start to hit Mikey with hockey sticks. Now Mikey gets really annoyed by this, and actually starts to attack the players themselves, and that's when he realises that he needs to go after the rubber, and so he does that. Now when Mikey is going after the rubber, he does hear the door get slammed, and he finds the door that got slammed, and starts to charge to hit, and when he does that, he goes through the door, and onto the ice ring. Now this is when things go from real bad to worse for Mikey's situation, just because one of the security guards come over to him and says basically you shouldn't be here and he wants to take him to the detention room. Now Mikey doesn't really want to do this and he actually tries to escape from them but he accidentally falls over and that's when the security guard like flips over and stuff like that and then that's when Mikey gets captured and he goes to the detention room. Now when Mikey is in the detention room, he tries to talk to Donatello and that's when Donatello finds a way out for him and has to go through the air vents. Now Casey comes in and tries to help Mikey go through the air vents and they're on top of the roof. Now Mikey decides to zip down from on top of the roof, but again this is where things go from bad to worse for Mikey's situation, just because the zip line that he's going down accidentally snaps and Mikey falls all the way down to the floor and has a big crack in the floor, so it must have been a pretty big hard fud for him. Now shortly after this, Don Taylor does come around and picks Mikey up and they go away and drive off to go after the rubber. Now as Mikey and Donnie are going after the rubber, they do come in contact with the Night Watcher. Now Mikey thinks that this is a really great thing, he really likes the Night Watcher, but Donnie doesn't really trust him. Now the whole Night Watcher situation, I would have to say that this might be one of the earlier nights for him and one of the early days for Night Watcher as a whole, so I do find this really interesting to see that he's doing this kind of stuff. And I do find it really interesting that Donnie doesn't really trust uh, the Night Watcher because he thinks of him as a vigilante and stuff like that, and he doesn't really know what side he's on. I do find that really interesting. Now, after seeing the Night Watcher, this does give Mikey the idea to put on the Calabunga Cole head again and then jump onto the robber's car. Now, this didn't really work out too well for Mikey just because as the car is going around the corner, Mikey flies off and goes straight into a wall. Now Donnie decides to go after the rubber and chase him down and more or less drives him back around to Mikey. Now shortly after this the rubber does come around to Mikey and this is when Mikey is standing in a big strong pose and the rubber decides to get out of his car and go after Mikey and try to beat him up. But Mikey actually beats the man up and does this really quickly which I was quite surprised at and it's really great. Now after this Mikey does go to the old lady's home and returns the purse with him. I don't really know how he knows where the old lady lives and stuff like that. I do find that really strange and weird, but it is where it is. And I must admit, it's a really great moment just seeing someone appreciate Mikey for being a hero and stuff like that. I can't complain too much about it, but I do find it really weird that Mikey knows where she lives. 
Now after this, Splinter does explain how disappointed he is in Mikey, more or less disobeying Splinter's rules and stuff like that, and he's really disappointed in Don Tello for helping Mikey disobey them. And I must admit with this whole page, it's not the best, just because this artist reused the same image over and over again for each panel. And uh, yeah, I can't tell if this is a really good thing or a bad thing, but it's pretty interesting for the story. Now to this, we do have one final page where we do get to see the Night Watcher standing in the middle of the road, and then he drives off. And that is where we do leave this story, and I must admit it's a pretty interesting story, just because I find it really interesting to see the early days of the Night Watcher as well as Carl Bung Cole. I also find the story really interesting and fascinating for what they do in the story, and stuff which you don't really get to see too often, and it's just a really nice change of pace for the story and what we're trying to do, and it's just really great. I must admit, I do really like the idea of uh, trying to really divert some really interesting ideas and new ones which I don't think they were really explored ever again in the whole universe. And I do think that Rap being a hero and a vigilante superhero type of thing is really interesting. As well as Mikey being like a hero, party planner, mascot type thing, again is really interesting. We've seen Mikey dressed up in like other superhero type things before, but I've never seen him do like a party gig or anything like that before, so I do find this to be really interesting. I also find the fact that Donnie doesn't really trust the Night Watcher, but Mikey really loves him and adores him, it was also really interesting. Now this whole idea, I do think it could be later developed into other comics or into the movie itself, but unfortunately they never really developed this whole idea and never go anything beyond this other than just saying that Donnie doesn't really trust him. And I do think that this could have been a really interesting point to make in the movie and stuff like that, because in the movie you do get to see Leonardo doesn't really trust him, but we never really get to see Donatello's point of view about the Night Watcher, so I think it could have been interesting to read really Don Tello as a character in that movie with like with like Night Watcher and stuff like that. I've also thought like there was stuff there to really divert some ideas here, but unfortunately you've never really take like these ideas and really divert them. But I do find these ideas really interesting, and I'm glad that we did get it for an issue, and I would prefer to have like, a lot more of it, but I'm just glad we even got one. But yeah. So in the next video we're going to be talking about how Don Tello meets up with the monsters, so stay tuned for that because I've got to think that could be a really interesting one with how Don Tello does meet up with them and the 13 monsters and stuff like that. But uh yeah, that's going to be it for today guys, if you do something please share, like, subscribe and all that stuff. Goodbye, yo, bye.